Well, good morning. I'm so glad that you're joining us today, and thank you, Lexi, for just how you brought us into this moment. You talked about the things that God was growing in your life right now, and uh, the truth is, is that God wants to grow things in this season in our lives right now, and a good question is, so how does he do that? And we've been looking at some short stories, parables that Jesus taught, and uh, Jesus was a master storyteller. Uh, the stories themselves were compelling. The only thing more compelling than the story was the actual meaning behind it. And so we're going to look at the story of the listening heart. We're in Matthew chapter 13. It says, That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. And then he told them many things in parables, saying, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering his seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. That's a really important phrase. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Down to verse 18, he said, Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding 100, 60, or 30 times what was sown. If... I were to ask you, what has been God saying to you lately? Some of you actually might have something that you would like to respond with. Others might be a little bit uncomfortable with the idea that God speaks to people. So do you believe God speaks to people? And a good follow-up question to that is, so how can you tell when it's God talking? And the truth is, is that when God speaks to people, they describe it in a lot of different ways. Some people describe it like an echo in their soul. Something just seems to be bouncing around and, and getting clearer. Other people describe it as an insight. Uh, something has been difficult for them, and now they see it differently. Or clarity. Something's been very confusing, and now things start getting clearer. Or conviction. They become more confident and more certain about a truth. Or sometimes they've been going through something and it's like a prompting or a whispering from God actually helps not only make sense of it, but give meaning to it. Those moments when we gain meaning, uh, that can be God speaking to us. So why would God want to talk to us? That's a good question. And I think that scripture provides good information about that because God wants to speak to us in order to shape our character, to influence our act actions, and to share life with us. That if we're going to have our character shape, if we're going to have our activities altered, if we're going to share life, it requires not just information, but conversation. And so God wants to speak to us. And God can speak to us in different seasons of life. For example, he can speak in the things that we enjoy. A lot of times when we enjoy something, we don't stop to think, what might God be speaking to me about the season in my, I'm in or how he's created me, the fact that I enjoy this so much. Or he can speak to us in the problems that we endure. Sometimes we think 
A problem means that God's not speaking to us anymore. But it's amazing what God can speak to us when we're going through very challenging seasons in our life. And then things that confuse us. Sometimes because it doesn't make sense, we assume God has nothing to say. That's actually not how God works. So if you begin to look at how God speaks to people, I think most people would agree that Jesus is the ultimate communication of God to us. If you want to understand God really well, just look at and listen to what Jesus had to say. But here's something I want you to see. In Jesus, we discover what God wants to happen in us, between us, and through us. Let me say that again. In Jesus, we discover what God wants to happen in us, between us, and through us. I wish I could tell you that everyone is always listening. Um, I'm a pastor. I speak a lot. I don't ever assume everyone hears everything that I say. Not everyone listens. And not everyone who's listening hears the exact same thing. So why is that? Well, we have layers that we hear things through in our lives. For example, we can have a, a set of assumptions, just how we believe the world works or what's actually going on around us. And so information is filtered through our assumptions. And sometimes we hear better than other times and sometimes not so well. Or prejudice. I'm not just talking about ethnic prejudice, but to prejudge either an individual or an organization or a situation. And we have hard time hearing new information when we've already made a determination about that individual or that group. And then there can be excuses. You know, maybe you've been through something and, and someone's kind of holding you accountable for something. And here's the thing. If we're making an excuse, we, we can't really hear any new information. What we want them to understand is if they had been in our situation, they would have done the same thing. Can't make excuses and listen well. Or experiences. We've been through certain things in our life. We, we, some of them we've navigated reasonably well. And so we have a way that we think life works. And consequently, that layer can keep us from hearing new information. And we also have beliefs. Some of those beliefs are, are found in the way that we were raised and the things that were said to us by our parents or significant individuals in our lives. Sometimes it's by organizations that we've connected with or, or information that we've accessed related to spiritual life or religious life. And all of those things create a set of layers. And they can influence what we hear, or even if we hear. Well, the Bible says that God wants to speak, but he speaks to our heart. The seed is sown into our heart. Now, the Bible describes the heart as basically three different things. It's what you think, it's how you feel, and it's what you decide. Let me say that again. The, the Bible describes the heart as what you think, your thoughts, how you feel, your emotions, and what you decide, how you exercise your will. So listening, this is really important, listening is the only way to change what we think, how we feel, or what we do. Listening is the only way to change what we think, how we feel, or what we do. So Jesus wanted to illustrate this. There are different ways that people listen. And this is not like a personality test. This is not you're going to find yourself in one of these three or four areas. What's true is that all of us find ourselves in any of these areas at some part of our life based on what we're going through and based on what's happening to us. So the first illustration of the listening heart that he gives is a, a well-worn path. So how does a path get made? And a path gets it's made because someone walks back and forth across the exact same space over and over and over again until eventually whatever vegetation is there gets trampled down and the soil gets significantly hard and it can't grow anything anymore. And he says a farmer can come along and when he scattered seed and it hits that hard soil, it just kind of bounces off. There are times when God wants to say something to us and our well-worn paths of how we have always done things just causes his word to bounce off of our heart. A wind can blow, and the seed will just blow away from it. You know, some of us have experienced some success in life. 
And uh, when something's gone really, really well for you, you tend to want to do that same thing over and over again. And if someone brings new information, it's really hard to listen to anything they have to say because you can say, look, I did it this way, and this is what worked for me. And so success can actually keep us from being open to hear what God would want to speak, but also failure can keep us from being open to hear. While success will keep us from being flexible and trying new things, failure will keep us from ever wanting to try anything again. We didn't like how it felt. We didn't like the outcome. We don't ever want to happen that, that to happen again. So our tendency is to back away from rather than lean into. And there's a couple of emotions that tend to surface a lot with people who have well-worn paths in their life. And one is the emotion of boredom. You just keep doing the same things over and over again. Eventually, you do get bored. And the other is frustration, that someone would ask you to do something differently than what you're used to. New information, uh, new responses. That can be very difficult. Now, in the season that we're in, I think a lot of us have had some patterns in our life, well-worn paths, things that have worked really well for us. So I guess the question I would ask right now is, in this season that you're in, have those well-worn paths worked really well in this season? Or is there something new that God would like to speak to you? The second listening heart example that he gives is seed that goes among rocky soil. Like there's a little bit of dirt on top, but a lot of rocks underneath. And uh, what this teaches us is that partial engagement produces shallow responses. Partial engagement produces shallow responses. So remember we talked about the heart being the thoughts that you think, the emotions that you feel, and the decisions that you make. Well, what's true is if we don't engage all of our heart, we might get some sudden growth, but we won't bear any fruit. For example, let's say what's most important to you is knowledge. You, you want more information. You want, want as many facts as you can possibly get. You, you really appreciate more knowledge about more things. And it's really easy when you're a knowledge-based person to look at someone who's more into emotion and think, you know, those people are really shallow. But what's true is, is if we only access information but we don't allow our emotions to be touched, or it never changes the decisions that we make, that's how Jesus describes shallowness. Or maybe you're the emotion person. Maybe you just look for that thing that's going to make you feel really good, and, and, and your spirit tends to soar in those moments. Uh, you're not really interested in information or actions to take, just those moments where your heart becomes alive. And uh, it's really easy for a person who's about the emotion to look at the information-based people and say, yeah, they're, they're just interested in facts and figures and, and they're shallow. Their, their heart isn't rich and deep like mine. But what Jesus says is if we only engage the heart in terms of emotions, but we ignore information and we're not activated, Jesus says something will grow fast, but it won't produce fruit. Or activity. We could be all wound up about activity and the, the, the things that we get accomplished. But if we're not engaging all of our heart, isn't that what Jesus said in Matthew 22? He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. He wants all of our being to respond to what he is doing. And then he talks about this third uh, listening heart option. And, he said, and, and this is when the seed goes among some thorns. And what we learn here is that some things can grow together, but only for a little while. Some things grow together only for a little while. And he focuses in on two things. I don't think Jesus is giving us an exhaustive list, but he hits two really big things. And one is worry. And um, I'm sure we've all had plenty of opportunities to, to worry about things in these days. There's so many things we can worry about. When you think about what worry is, it's just simply calculating life based on our abilities, on what we can control and what resources we have. And if we see something that looks bigger than us or has more, requires more from us than we have to give, we worry. And what Jesus tells us is, is that that worry will choke out our capacity to hear what God is saying. God will be trying to speak to us, and all we can hear is all the things that can go wrong. And then he says, or the deceitfulness of wealth. 
only what I think I can become or I can have if I get this stuff or these resources. And, and there's a real deceitfulness to wealth. If I had more, then I would be. And whatever you fill that blank in with, like that can be a real deception in your life. And what you should know is whether it's, whether it's deceitfulness of, of wealth or whether it's worry, these weeds choke out God's word. In fact, what scripture reveals is they demand first place. If you're a worrier, there are no other thoughts that are allowed to come before your worry. And if you're all about what you can get in life, there are no other thoughts that will be allowed before you can see how that's going to affect your bottom line. And what you should know is God's word is no different. He insists on having first place. He doesn't want us to be driven by our worry or driven by the deceitfulness of wealth. He wants us to weed those things up and allow his word to work into our spirits and into our hearts. And then he talks about the, list, the, the, the last listening heart. And that is good soil. And this is a person who listens, he receives, and responds to what God is saying. He receives and responds. Um, listening is one of those things that it's, it's not complicated. It's just hard. Listening requires us to stop talking and to be silent and to be patient. And then we try to discern what's being said. Uh, it's not that we're incapable of listening. It's just that we often don't have the patience for it. But even back in the Old Testament, there was a young boy named Samuel who was living in the house of God at that time. And God began to call and speak to him. And this idea of being able to hear God speak into our lives is not complicated. Even a child can lean into and listen to what God is saying. And I believe that's what God is calling us to. When we allow God to speak into our lives and we respond, there's a fruit that begins to be born. You've probably heard of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5. And, and this is what it says. He brings gifts into our lives much the same way fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop, we develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, a conviction that basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. That's the kind of fruit that begins to be born. When we listen, when we receive and respond to what God is saying to us. And here's kind of a surprise. The better you get at listening to God, the better you'll get at listening to others. And I can promise you that'll have far more impact in your relationships than almost anything you can say. So I'm going to recommend um, some homework for you. And uh, this is what I would ask you to do. Find time every single day. Every single day. And the first thing I'd like you to do is just sit quietly for a couple minutes. Now I know with all the kids home, that might be harder than other days, but just try. And uh, it actually helps me to set a timer because uh, when I think two minutes are gone, usually a lot less time is actually, has gone by. So two minutes of just silence and then read and reflect on a passage of scripture. Just see if God has something to say, not just information he's presenting to you, but communication to you. And then what's the way you can respond to that? What prayer could flow out of that? And I think if you're willing to do that, you'll discover God has something to say, and it can make all the difference in the world. Let's just bow for prayer. Uh, Father, there's so much noise in our world. There's so many voices 
that are being raised. And you've decided you will not outshout them. That by your spirit, you still whisper truth and grace into our lives. And that you don't have to raise your voice for us to hear you. We just have to quiet our hearts. So would you help us do that? Would you help us to settle in, to draw close to you, and to listen to those whispers that you might speak into our lives? Because we trust that when you speak into our lives, good things grow from our lives. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.